Hello there, friends, and welcome. We are now going to cover all of the most important changes of the newest patch. That came with the Dance of Masks DLC. We already dived into the new pet buffs, and now it's time for the other buffs and nerfs, as we have not only a pretty big nerf to the strongest weapon and one of the best feats in the game, but also even new class abilities and unique dragon forms for the shifter class. So let's get right into it. Casting the Promise of Power ability of the Bane of Spirit Ring now takes a swift action as stated in the description. Well, I wouldn't call it a nerf because it's more like an oversight, but it definitely reduces the power of the item. The Bane of Spirit Ring has always been one of the best ultimate rings in the game. And lets you turn all of your character's weapon damage into force, which is irresistible. So amazing for any character against any enemy. Before, it used to be a free action, which means you could instantly activate it on every single party member at the very start of battle before enemies got to do anything at all, as free actions are unlimited. Now it's a swift action, which means it's only once per turn. So one character can only buff one party member with it instead of everyone. Honestly, I don't think it changes that much, because you just need Bane of Spirit on one character anyways, usually your most powerful character. Considering how high you can stack damage even on just a single character, like the main character, depending on Mythic Path and Build, having it on just one ally is more than enough. And some party members definitely won't have any use for a swift action anyways, even if they are limited to once per turn. Which means Bane of Spirit is still amazing. Just remember that you cannot change spell damage into force anymore through this ring, it's only weapon damage. But this is a change that happened in an earlier patch, not the new one. This change is also very important and will nerf the best weapon in the game. Fix an issue with improved critical, it no longer doubles critical range from all sources, only the weapon's critical range as intended. What this means is everyone's favorite ultimate weapon, the Grave Singer Great Axe, is no longer the ultimate weapon in the game, I'm afraid. By default, one of these weapon's upgrades already increased its critical range to 1820 instead of 20, which is the normal Great Axe critical. When you added Improved Critical, it would become 15 to 20, just like a Kukri, Rapier, Scimitar or Falchion, other high critical range weapons. Now, this won't stack anymore, although I don't quite understand why. I guess they don't want it remaining the best weapon. Anyways, this is why my character with Grave Singer and Improved Critical has 17 to 20 critical instead of 15 to 20 now. And well, Grave Singer used to be the best because you could have the highest critical range with the highest critical damage, because great axes have higher critical damage by default. Times 3, then times 4 with mythic critical, we have times 5 because of our scald party member, as always amazing. But the thing is, if you want to min max, so for gameplay power, because of the way the outflank teamwork feat works, and this is one of the best feats in the game that any melee build wants, whenever you score a critical hit, all nearby allies that also have the feat will get a free attack against the enemy. And if this free attack is also a critical hit, it kinda loops back and forth itself, limited only by the amount of attacks of opportunity your characters can make per turn. Therefore, if you wanna drown the enemies in extra attacks, Having higher critical range on all party members is the best way to go. What this means is, I would much rather now go with another high critical range weapon, like Falchion, Scimitars, Foshars, Rapiers, Kukris, instead of Gravesinger, because they can at least have 15 to 20 critical range, even higher, with a Trickster main character. But like I said, it's only if you really want to be max, because even if you go with a weapon that has lower critical range, so long as you have a few party members with high critical range weapons, it's still good enough. Feel free to go with whatever weapon type you want for role-playing, flavor, and whatnot. But yes, Gravesinger is no longer the ultimate weapon in the game. Having improved on armed strike and shield bash now allows you to execute an attack with both a fist and a shield, like fighting with two weapons. This is a fun change. Kinda begs for a build focus into it, so I'll see what I can do later. Because unlike in the Pillars of Eternity games, you can't really dual wield your fists in Pathfinder or Dungeons and Dragons. Level 20 Dragon Blood Shifter now gains a final form of a huge dragon 
with unique breath ability. So the Dragon Shifter class can change into a different Dragon type depending on your alignment. Neutral has access to all forms, while Evil gets the Chromatic Dragons and Good the Metallic ones. And now the ultimate dragons are supposed to have secondary breath effects instead of just damage. So let's see how it goes for the black dragon, which has an acid breath. Enemies that fail the saving throw will receive a minus 5 penalty to attack rolls for 1d4 plus 1 rounds. It's a good enough benefit, it's just that the difficulty class for this will never be high, because you can't really apply many modifiers to it. And the breath is a standard action, so you can't really combine it with attacks and so on in the same turn. Also, I hate that it has a cooldown. I don't think the ultimate breath should have a cooldown, especially for an ability that's subpar by default. Anyways, let's see the blue dragon shape now. You have a lightning breath that will shock enemies and make them receive a minus 3 penalty to saving throws. The Brass Dragon is supposed to have a new model, I think. And the Breath effect is actually quite unique and great. It's a Fire Breath that, well, first has no friendly fire, so allies affected by the Breath won't take damage, but instead they'll become overheated for 1d4 plus 1 rounds, which increases their speed but most importantly grants them an extra attack with their main hand weapon at full base attack bonus just like haste, except it will stack with haste. So something quite unique that I don't think any other class has access to. Because you don't have to rely on the enemies failing the save, rather you can just spread buff your allies with it, I think it's quite a good change. Definitely much better than just damage. So everyone is overheated now. Does the fire effect. Brass dragon for the win, definitely. I do think it's a metallic dragon, so the evil shifters won't get it, however. Now let's see the bronze dragon. Oh, another one with an amazing effect. Just like the brass dragon, it buffs your allies. It hits a line, just like the previous dragon breath, but you can target multiple allies if they are together. And the effect is amazing. Allies will become electrified for a huge plus 5 dodge bonus to AC for 1d4 plus 1 rounds. Because the breath itself refreshes in around 1d4 rounds, you can constantly pre buff allies with this for before every single battle. And don't forget, dodge bonuses to AC stack with other dodge bonuses. Now let's see the Copper Dragon. It's similar to the previous dragon, but now allies will have a plus 5 bonus to AC. It did however damage my allies, which I guess is an oversight, because allies aren't meant to take damage anyways. Now the gold dragon, who should have a fire breath. Allies affected by the breath take no damage, but instead heal the same number of hit points. It's fun for sure, but at this point you have enough healing sources. On the other hand, extra attacks per round and extra dodge AC, you can never have enough. Now the evil green dragon. Acid breath, and the enemies that fail the save will take an additional 16d8 damage each round. So the breath kinda reapplies itself. Now the ever so popular and famous red dragon. Fire Breath that melts the enemy's armor class, applying a minus 5 penalty to AC for 1d4 plus 1 rounds, but once again the enemies have to fail the save. We now have the Silver Good Dragon. Oh wow, this bonus is actually amazing as well. For a plus 5 Sacred Bonus to both attack and damage for 1d4 plus 1 rounds. Sacred bonuses are very rare. Usually you only have the... Burst of Glory spell as far as area of effect, and it's only a plus one sacred to attack rolls. It can definitely hit your whole party at once because of the huge cone area, and you'll get a very nice plus five sacred to attack and damage. Sadly, because of the breath cooldown, you cannot pre buff your allies with multiple ones of these by combining the metallic dragons. Lastly, we have the evil white dragon. It's a cold breath that will make enemies paralyzed if they fail the save. 
Over all the metallic dragons for good align shifters definitely have much better effects because you don't need to rely on the enemies failing the saving throw. You can just spread buff your allies with it and the effects are quite unique as we just saw. Especially extra armor class, extra attacks and attack rolls and damage. I am definitely very pleased by this capstone ability despite the fact it only comes super late at level 20. At the very least, they went beyond just, you know, giving them the ultimate dragon shapes, because any caster can get that. Druid angels or lich wizards can get it, even at level 13 only. Shamans now get the manifestation ability on level 20, thanks to their spirit. This is fun because each spirit gets a new manifestation, I believe. The battle manifestation means pounce for free, which is a very powerful ability, but you could just have a scald to provide it way earlier plus even a huge amount of extra hit points by twice your constitution modifier. The other bonuses are mostly defensive and not that good. Now let's see what the bones manifestation does. Upon reaching level 20, you'll get to cast Animate Dead at Will, which is quite flavorful and fun. Unfortunately, it does not seem like these stack, because by default, Wrath doesn't have a summon limit, but... You only get to use it once, I think. So while you do have infinite skellies, it's only a small amount of them, unfortunately. Kinda sad, because at the point you would get them level 20, it's not game-breaking or anything, but it would be fun if you could have an unlimited skelly army. Now Flame has, let's see, fire resistance, kinda poor, but a secondary ability to empower fire spells with either Reach, Extend, or Bolster. Um, kinda unnecessary, I mean, Bolster spell is always great, but waiting for level 20 for that? <laughs> Not really that amazing or anything. And for Reach and Extend, you could just use Meta Magic Rods. Now, Frost. You'll become immune to cold, and well, it's the same as the Fire Shaman, but for Ice spells. Now, let's see Life. Immunity to Bleed, Death Attacks, and Negative Energy, as well as Exhausted, Fatigued, Nauseated, and Sickened. It's decent, but there are other ways of achieving these immunities from buffs, especially depending on your Mythic Path, which at level 20 would already be at maximum power. As far as the Nature Manifestation, once per day you can change your type into Plant, Animal, or Humanoid, which I suppose is meant to give you the special qualities like Immunities, of the form, usually plant being the best one, because it has immunities humanoid and animal just don't. As far as the stone manifestation, it's the same as frost and flame. Acid resistance and then reach, extend or bolster for acid spells. Although there aren't anywhere near as many as fire and frost. The same for the waves manifestation, it's the same as frost actually. Cold spells. Lastly, for wind, well, it's the same thing, but for electricity spells. Now, for a very important change as well that can change many builds, Shatter Defenses no longer works before the target was hit. It's not exactly a nerf, more like a fix, I suppose. So, the way Shatter Defenses used to work was like this so long as the enemy was shaken or frightened, they would automatically become flat-footed to all of your attacks, which means even at the very start of battle for your first attack, the attacks of all party members with this feat really, the enemy would be flat-footed which highly reduces their armor class. And as far as the requirement of being shaken or frightened, this is very easy to get, by simply having one ally cast the Frightful Aspect self-buff, as it will automatically frighten enemies as an aura without a saving throw, without any spell resistance, so if the enemy is not immune to fear, they get hit with this, which of course procs shatter defenses. Now you actually have to hit the enemy first, so that they'll become flat-footed to your following attacks. It's nowhere near as good, I'm afraid, but if you have the feats to spare, it can be a good enough choice anyways, because like I said, it's still very easy to proc it. It's just not a must-have on every melee build, I suppose. Especially because it does have annoying requirements, it's weapon focus and then does in display. So depending on your character's feat selection, you might as well spare yourself of shutter defenses and get something else. 
because honestly you can get so many bonuses to attack rolls in this game starting from level 15 that I don't think it will make that much of a nerf. The other patch, so 2.3.2c, is just hotfixes for bugs. For example, if you found your pet lagging one level behind, it's been fixed now. And the special Insider Skull archetype can now share sneak attack properly and also other rogue talents with your party members, which is a tremendous boost. But this is just a fix, it was always meant to do that. Well, alright friends, so this was it for our patch 2.0.3bb changes, one of the biggest patches yet. The next Pathfinder guide will most likely be my Mantis Zealot Warpriest build. As always, if you found this video useful, please remember to like, subscribe and also consider becoming a channel member if you can. I really appreciate your support. Also, if I missed a patch change you found important as there's a lot of stuff to cover, please comment down below. Thank you for watching and see you next time, friends.